Hi everyone, welcome to Potluck Who Talks. <laughs> Not what you expected, is it? This week uh, I'm here with my buddy Eric. Eric, how have you been? Hey, how are you doing? Good, Max. Good. It feels awkward you doing the intro. You, you want me to do it or, or is it? A- yeah, it felt awkward for me too. Let's not do that again. Uh, <laughs> so uh, what are we talking about today? Man, I really wanted to talk to you about the Amazon, not the evil multi-billion trillion company uh, with that weird bald guy, but um, the the river and the region around it and the jungle and, you know, the tribes and you spend a lot of time there, you know, and I think it's a really interesting culinary landscape. How was your experience there? Yeah, well, like I, I visited the Amazon many times uh, as a kid because Venezuela has also part of the Amazon and I have visited in, in different countries, uh, Bolivia, Brazil, Peru and Venezuela. I haven't been to Colombia. I know in, uh, Colombia is super interesting as well. But yeah, what can I say about the Amazon? Well, first of all, like the whole rainforest uh, was human created. When humans arrived uh, to South America, like about 20,000 years ago, they created these islands of, of, you know, agriculture, like these forest islands. And the whole thing grew into the forest uh, that we know today. And things that I've seen that, that I, I, I feel are super interesting uh, for example, there is this uh, flatbread in Venezuela called cassave. And, and this bread is made of uh, yuca, manioc, but a, a specific one that, that is a, a poisonous one. So there, there is this uh, specific procedure to cook it, which is not that complicated. It's like grating it and changing the, the, the water. And then the second batch, you can actually use it to cook uh, without being it poisonous. Today, today there, there are new varieties that are not poisonous anymore. So the, all the maniacs uh, that you will find in the supermarkets in, in Latin America are perfectly edible. The thing is, I grew up with this flatbread called cassave, learning that, that it was something super Venezuelan from the indigenous people and blah, blah, blah. But of course, we don't get so much history of the pre-European civilizations and cultures because basically uh, the, the reigning culture is the one that exterminated them or dominated them so it makes sense that they, they don't care about them li- like structurally yeah uh, i would say nowadays the new generations are really interested in, in getting all that knowledge back the, the, there was a lot of knowledge lost just by losing the languages and the religions uh, you, you can imagine how much how many things got, got lost there but what my point was when i went to to Bolivia, which is pretty far away from Venezuela. They also had this flatbread called cassave, and they also say that there's something from them, that they always had it. And for, for me, this was like super crazy, and, and it really changed my, my way of understanding the continent. Of course, you see in Europe, and you will see countries that have variation of the word bread or the word pan in different variations, uh, but... You, you can track it down. This comes from, from the Romans or the Germans, and that's that's where the word comes from. Well, in the case of cassave, the, there, were, the, there was a, a specific tribe that, that was a very dominant one all over the region. Uh, it was called the Arawak. So there was a Caribe uh, ethne, the Caribe family. Then, then you have the Arawak, and there, there are, of course, many others. But this one, the Arawak, Again, this is something that, that I, when I went to school in Venezuela, you learned that the Arawakos or Arawaks, uh, uh, it's a, an ethnic, a, a, an indigenous family that, the, that you have in the country. But you like, or at least I didn't pay enough attention at school, but I didn't get that the, this was all over South America. They, they get uh, as far uh, as to Bolivia, you know? And these are the responsibles of having this flatbread that you will find it also in the Caribbean. They, they also they, these uh, tribes could also navigate, and they, they were also spread in the Caribbean into the deep Amazonas uh, with the same language and these kind of things, like a specific bread that is something that can survive, you know, colonization and transculturalization and all these kind of things. But the bread remains with the same word and across the continent, you know, and I, I thought that was pretty interesting. But then other things that, well, 
First of all, there are many, many things that come from the Amazonas that, that we see daily, like uh, chilies or uh, what else? Um, a pineapple. Uh, the, the, there are lots of, you know, the different fruits and things uh, that have their origin there. Perhaps I, I said something wrong. Perhaps somebody will say, no, pineapples are not from the <laughs> rainforest. They're from the mountain or something like that. But anyways, another thing that was really interesting, similar to cassava, was that I saw this ant chili sauce in, in Venezuela. And for me, this was super interesting. All of my life, I thought that actually the ants gave the spiciness to the sauce. So it was like, oh, wow, you have like a different source of spiciness uh, that is not capsicum, but it's like ants. And then I found out that, no, the, the ants are not spicy. They add chili to the sauce and that, that's what, what makes it spicy. And the ants are only for flavor, but they, they have like this really deep, meaty flavor. And again, this is also made like with a, a fermented yuca juice, manioc juice that they use to, to also to give more, more flavor to the sauce. And again, they have the same thing in Peru and in Bolivia with different names. And for me, this was also super interesting, you know, but because these are these kind of things like, I don't know, hummus that you will find all over the Mediterranean. But they, they, they're from completely different cultures or Middle East, better said, you know, and then they have different variations. So you will find this fermented yuca sauce with ants in different parts of the Amazonas with different variations. In Brazil, they have like a variation called tucupi, which is like a liquid yellow sauce. And you will find it in markets all over the Amazonas. And it's like a super sour sauce. Like it, it's very sour. And the... This sauce was featured in some of the menus at Del Bulli. Like when I was doing some research, uh, like Ferran served. But when I see this, and also in, in the last book of Tapas of Albert Adria, he also has like a, a tucupi featured s somewhere. Really? But when I see that, uh, it feels wrong to me somehow because to make these sauces, these specific ones, you do need the, uh, how to say, this bitter poisonous yuca to to do the original right thing, right? Right. Which you won't find you you won't even find like a like the yucas you see in, in South America and Europe. You will find like a different one which is the African one and it's not the same thing and you you won't get the, the same effect. Yeah. These are the these things with, you know, cooking recipes from other countries and, and trying to replicate them with local ingredients and it's not going to be ever the same. Yeah. But yeah, I would say th those two things were kind of like, like were impressive to me to see that that, that there are like this parallelism or, or this um, recipes or dishes uh, that you you find in different regions of the Amazonas. Uh, it's also important to mention that that remember the episode of taboo foods where I mentioned that um, mushrooms are not eaten in the Amazonas. Well, that that's uh, that's incorrect. Of course, uh, ancient tribes did everything with mushrooms, uh, even as, um, you know, like uh, hunting amulets with uh, magic properties or, or also uh, as drugs or medicines or food or all kinds of things. But all that knowledge, as I was mentioning, got lost. Like you see these new generations and and it's, they're not necessarily linked to these uh, tribes. For example, my friend Kenzo, he's, I don't know how many generations he has, but, but he has like Japanese heritage, uh, but, but he's from the Amazonas. You see, like, they're like these settlers that come from, from different places that, that, that got uh, installed there and, and, and made their villages and communities, but they, they have no link to shamanism or, you know, like, like this old knowledge from old cultures in most cases. And again, all over the Amazonas, it doesn't matter where, it's completely Christian. You won't see any religion that is not Christianism in the Amazonas. Well, except, of course, remote tribes that haven't got, you know, like colonized or, or transculturalized. There's also this huge fish called pirarucu or paiche. It's uh, like like a huge monster. Like it, it can... It's like prehistoric sort of dinosaur fish, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it can be... A, don't, they make, don't they make leather out of the skin also? Yeah, leather. And, and it's also processes similar to codfish, you know, salted, especially in Brazil. 
it's an an invasive species, so it's it's good to hunt it. You have to hunt it. You don't fish the thing. You you need like a sp- specific procedure to 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 get it. And these are like you know like a big one can be as big as two or three cars uh, in line. You know like that that large. And of course, you have all these types of fruits. A very famous one is acai, that it has become very trendy in this, uh, you know, smoothie, healthy domain. It's considered a, a superfood. But like this acai, that is a fruit from a palm tree, there are millions of different ones and also millions of different palm hearts that you can eat. But I mean, I could talk on and on and on of, of different ingredients and things. But yeah, basically the, that's it. There are many chefs that have worked up with specific producers from the Amazonas. Probably one of the most famous one is Alex Atala. Of course. But in Peru, you have Pedro Schiaffino. In Venezuela, you have Nelson Mendes. In Colombia, you have Eduardo Martinez. There is also in, in Belén, in Brazil, is another chef called Tiago Castaño. And the, these are chefs that... that you know, they work mostly with Amazonian produce and and working with Amazonian produce. One of the keys is to, to have a, a connection with the communities and the producers and, and building, you know, fruitful relationships. Yeah, that's nice. Do you have any questions, Phil, on the Amazon? So, I mean, it's like to me from as somebody who's never been there, right? And like looking at it from the outside. You know, like it's super, this whole area is so interesting because like you say, you know, it kind of grew from like little agriculture sort of plots. So like, I feel like lots of people imagine it as this like really hostile environment, you know? Um, but I think that, yeah, it, it <laughs> is sure. But like at the same time, it feels really plentiful. Like there's so much stuff there, you know, like it's very giving also. How would you like, if you had to sum it up, how would you describe the, like the flora yeah, I mean, it it does feel hostile in terms of, you know, you, you see millions of different mosquitoes from millions of different sizes around you and <laughs> you, you want to get them, you want to get rid of them. That for once, if you talk about the flora, so that like if you put the whole Amazonas together, it could be a, as big a, as Europe, probably, yeah. like a Central Europe. So, um it's super diverse, but even in specific regions where, where I've been, like, it feels like, like you don't see a, a repeated plant. It feels like, like every plant is a different one, you know? And if you're walking through the forest, you will see like this crazy micro environments where suddenly everything is full of blue mushrooms, you know, like this, just this space, this, suddenly you enter the domain of this specific color or thing or plant you know while 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 you walk that sounds really trippy yeah it, you will you will see you know like crocodiles or tigers or snakes for sure you know yeah nice and like food wise you know i mean like if you if we're talking about the culinary like the produce landscape how would you summarize it i remember we went like mushroom hunting with with pedro schiaffino and jacob all on there who really know the forest and, and where to find uh, mushrooms and these kind of things, they really could identify the, the mushrooms that we could eat. And they, they were these mushrooms that they look exactly like, like seps, like porcini mushrooms. Yeah. It's probably like, you know, like a variation, like a, an Amazonian variation or something like that. But that, that was quite, quite amazing. Vanilla, uh, wild vanilla. Probably the best vanilla that, I, that I've tried in my life was a piece of... I actually had never seen fresh vanilla really? that looks kind of like like a, like a pea or a, a green plantain. I've never like that. seen fresh vanilla, yeah. Yeah, because it's like a green thing that you then you ferment it and, you know, and until it, it becomes black. Yeah. Yeah, that was really impressive. But again, doing this foraging session with Schiaffino, this is a guy that he would take any plant and eat it. You know, that the, there is a like a vast potential of things that, that can be found and done there. And this is the work that chefs like, again, in Nuema, in Ecuador also, like the, these chefs are trying to, you know, take advantage of this since you're already in a country that, that has access to the Amazonas to, to put this kind of products into the restaurants, which is super interesting. That's really cool. 
And that's it for this week's episode of Potluck Food Talks. If you like what we're doing, make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. You can also find us on Instagram and TikTok as Potluck Food Talks. The show airs every Monday.